Hi, so we're here at the Cotton Harvest Quilt Shop in Seaforth, Ontario, and we had a coloring demonstration today, and a few folks weren't able to make it, so we thought we might shoot a quick video um, to go over what we covered today, and also for reference that for those folks who uh, very generously showed up. So, um, what we have been working on here is the Crab Apple Hill uh, Studios Meg Hockey design for shiny and bright and um, Meg Hockey does several designs for which she uses coloring and I think that's fairly intimidating for a lot of quilters and embroiderers so we wanted to take hopefully some of the fear out of that and we've done some other designs um, in the past and really enjoyed this uh, particular method of embroidery and uh, and making that pop a little bit. So here's another of her designs that we colored in the past and uh, Trina's gotten the embroidery mostly done. There's a few things that are lacking but the color adds a lot we think and that's um, nicely juxtaposed with this really pretty snowman uh, design that was done by a friend of hers which is just absolutely beautiful. But also we think it would it would have been really nice with some coloring in the hats and the, um, the nose. Although the design didn't call for that, that doesn't mean it can't be done. So if you look at these patterns from Crabapple Hill, um, you'll see that it's got coloring here. And on the inside, it gives you a map for your coloring. And Meg Hockey gives you very explicit instructions for how to color um, in the kit. And each color, she tells you how she makes it. And the names of the crayons that she uses are very specifically the Crayola crayons um, from the 64 count box. You know how they always have the really crazy names like uh, chestnut and sea green and I don't know about you guys but I grew up with these and that's they've sort of defined my definition of colors for the last 42 years um, but you use those to help you to help guide you so if you're an embroiderer you know that you take your design and pin it to under your uh, pre-laundered and ironed muslin. And then you can put that on a window or a light box or if you have a good background, a lot of times the, it shows through the muslin nicely. And we use a um, Pigma Micron one millimeter pen in brown because that seems to do pretty well not showing through the embroidery floss. And it's an acid-free ink, so it doesn't eat at our cloth over the years. So, once we get our design all outlined, ideally we would iron it again to get out all these wrinkles um, so that we're not dealing with them constantly, but I've been working with this and wagging it around so it has some wrinkles. And then we sit down for our coloring. Embroiderers always want to do the embroidery first and then put the coloring in, but it does much better if you color first and then embroider. So um, that's what we do. and. That there are some tricks to that. It's it's pretty straightforward, and she does give you step by step instructions in the kit. But the nitty gritty of it is you color everything that has a color to it, such as all of this. White goes down first, and that's much less like a painter putting gesso on a canvas to prep it. It creates a much smoother texture um, for the color. It allows the color to be smoother and it blends better once we heat set that crayon. So um, the first thing you do is you pick out a section and I do one section at a time rather than the entire design so that my arm's not constantly swiping over my white and taking it off and making it less consistent. So as I put down the white, I'm gonna have to resituate my, um, my camera here for a second, but so as I do it, I 
um, I create some tension um, on the cloth with two fingers, create tension, otherwise the cloth, cloth uh, wrinkles up and it's much more difficult to color. So then I take my crayon and I lay it sideways and I very, very gently begin to color. So gently that it almost seems as if you're not doing anything for a little while. And as I do that, um, I try to be patient and I try to keep that crayon turned on its side. And the reason for that is that helps me maintain a point on the end, which in the areas that require detail will be very important. So I try to be as patient as possible and I lay that, that white into that area. And you can see it even on white cloth, in, uh, depending on which way the light's laying, you can really see it. You can feel it as well. And as you start, the tooth of the cloth will feel much more grainy than it does as you get more and more wax laid into the tooth. So in these broad areas, I just very gently go over and over and over it and very slowly put white in there. And then to get in the details, I use the point. When you use the point, it's really important to be very, very gentle because it lays a lot of wax down very quickly. And if you, your white undercoat is uneven, then your color will not look near as good. So you very gently lay in white on those edges. Very, very gently. And I'm sorry my fingers are getting in the way and this is not the highest quality video, but maybe you'll at least get the gist of it. And <clears throat> you can feel free to send us any questions that you might have. Any... So I go in, with the white, the, the direction of the strokes isn't as important. What's most important with the white is that it's consistently laid down. So once we get a good layer of white in there, you can look at the, the road map and see sort of where you're going with what color to put in there next. Now I'm going to set this down and pick up the video. Um, Mac Hockey has five different shades of green and six different shades of pink that she talks about in this design. And I find it very difficult to distinguish where to put what because it's not um, specifically written in there um, what to use where. So honestly, some of this I'm winging, but some of it, as you look at the design, if you will look at the edge of where it's been colored and look at the color of the floss that's used for the embroidery, you can distinguish, for instance, that this is light blue here, and then here there's a dark blue. So you know that she intends for this blue to be the darker blue and this blue to be the lighter blue. Here, this is obviously a more vivid green, and this is obviously a more seafoam green. Maybe it's aqua. I'm not sure how she distinguishes aqua from seafoam green, um, to be completely honest. But I think as long as you get as close as possible, you'll do quite well. Um, and then once you get your white in, you find your spot on here. So for instance, here's the little ball that we've been putting the white on, and it's a very faint pink color. Uh, carnation pink is what she uses for a lot of her, uh, the base of the reds and the base of the pinks. So again, very gentle, very, very gentle. Um, laying this color on its side and applying a light, light layer of pink. Um, maintain your tension so that you're not getting wrinkling and just very slowly put some pink in. Again, it almost feels like you're not even doing anything for a little while. And if you'll look at the, um, 
The design, Meg uses some lighter areas and some darker areas to create some depth. And if you're accustomed to doing that and want to, then it makes it look wonderful, I think. Um, the boot that I showed you earlier does not have any places where she uses depth or where I put depth in. It's all flat and it still looks wonderful. So I think either direction is fine. Um, so here we have that. I'm gonna, to create some depth, I'm gonna put just a little bit of extra color on the edges. Like so. With the color, you want your strokes to be a little bit more consistent because they will show up to some degree. I've found that when I shade, I really like to use a circular stroke. Very gentle circular stroke and it seems to uh, translate really well to the crayons. Um, I don't use that in a lot of my paintings or drawings, but here it seems to do quite well. So we've created a little bit of depth there. It's still really pale, um, kind of like it is in the picture. And so the next thing we would do after we get color in all of the spots is heat set it. And um, that's a fairly simple process. You take a white paper towel that has no color on it and a dryer set to the cotton setting Oh no, sorry, iron setting to the cotton, uh, cotton setting that's dry, no uh, steam. You set your paper towel on top and then press with the iron for a few seconds. Lift it, lift your paper towel, and if there's any color there, then you do that again with a, a brand new paper towel. And you do that until all the color is gone. And I don't usually do that until the whole design is complete. Um, and once you have everything colored in and everything heat set, then you start your embroidery just like you normally would. And it goes fine. It doesn't cause any weird uh, toughness in the um, fabric. So if you have any questions, please let us know. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks.